Jurions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Decode Your Reality. My name is Logan. I figured I'd mix it up a little bit with my intro. It's always the boilerplate same, kind of catch all of you off guard. But nonetheless, here I am, and I'm decoding the word piano. We're going to be breaking down and decoding the word piano, the musical instrument, the piano, the noun piano. We're going to be featuring the one of my all-time favorites, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I mean, the kid was a prodigy. I think started composing at the age of four, which is just mind-blowing. And, you know, again, I go back to what I've been saying, that man is being used. We're being used like toys, like Toy Story the movie. I mean, how do you explain these people that are at this young age and can just wail on the guitar, you know, sling the keys on a piano, do all these things that, you know, even a, a, a professional adult can't do. How's that possible that they can do that? Well, I, I think I've come up with the answer because man is being, we're being used for entertainment. We're being used to carry out an agenda. And music is a big way to do that because it you know it, it serenades people gets them into the mood so many things but you know we're gonna be breaking down Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and you know here is his Wikipedia and it's fascinating I mean we're gonna be getting into his birth name his baptized name I mean the the, the whole story is just fascinating and I could have gone into so much more detail but here we go. I'm not going to be doing any methods. If you've been following my research, thank you for your support. By now, you should know the methods I use. If you're new to this, just follow along. It's, you know, we're putting the puzzle together. And I know you know how to do that. But we're using multiple layers of the mystical arts and also science and numbers and stuff like that. And it tells a story when you bring them all together. And it gives you the narrative of how really this world works. So starting off in the zero position... Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, his birth name. Number one, the city of Salzburg, where he was born. Number two, the alchemology of Mozart. Number three, Wolfgang Jack. Number four, the piano keys. Number five, 52 and 36. And then always following at the very end, I'd like to know what you see during this presentation. A lot of you have given so many amazing decodes that I'm grateful for. A lot of your ideas spark the things that I end up going in decoding. And I think it was either John William Owen or Nate, one of you guys tipped me off to this. I think you had mentioned the 52 and 36 keys and it sparked me to go and look into this topic more, and here I am doing a decode on it. So thank you very much for all of your contributions. So starting off is the actual baptized name of Mozart. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it's a 46-letter word. You know, of course, the subtleties... 46 being tied to the tree of life, 46 being the mirror of the 64, which is tied to the GD, 64 codons in our DNA. It's got a really big straw tie-in, and this guy has a baptized name of that. And notice, you know, in the string of pi, which is the perfect, the measurement of a perfect circle, everything is contained in that circle, and we're getting into sacred geometry. The circle, the square, and the triangle. Those shapes are embedded into our matrix reality. But nonetheless, the actual number 197, which is the outcome of numerology for Mozart's baptized name, in the string of pi, it's found at the 37th decimal digit, 37, 38, and 39, but it starts at the 37th decimal digit of pi, and that, as you know, if you've been following, is tied to the 37th card in the deck of the cards of illumination the jack diamonds the jack in the box card and so you know what does that indicate well to me i would interpret it as this guy came down into the box 
And of course the jacks, you know, they're the knights on the chessboard. So you can kind of use your imagination what they're going to be doing. What they're going to be doing. So then we move on to the next. And that is the element that his baptized name is tied to. Notice, you know, it's 197 tied to the Jack in the Box. But the element on the periodic table is the element Mercury. Which is another element tied to the Tree of Life. Tree of Life is 46, but it's also the number 80 when you spell out Tree of Life in the original spelling of it. But I want you to really focus on Mercury. What is the planet Mercury all about? The planet Mercury is the planet of communication. Communication. Isn't that where music fits in? I mean, you couldn't have picked a better scenario to map it out and whatever's mapping it out and creating all this stuff. I mean, these are big, strong tie-ins here. When we go into his birthday and his death day, this one completely blew me away. Now, remember, folks, we're talking about one of the most prolific names in the piano world. To me, he's the piano of all pianists. I mean, four years old, he started composing. Unheard of. So his birthday, the 27th of January, is the King Clubs card. What is the King Clubs card? Well, clubs means mind. And so when you study the cards, you know that hearts is fire, clubs is air, diamonds is water, and spades is earth. The four classical elements fit with the four suits of each card. And the clubs is air, it's the mental mind. Like if this creation of our world is using these cards to do it through the club suit is the mind of the divine the mind of this code and you're seeing it of course in symbolic fashion with the card but the king clubs card is the king of the mind if the divine had a mind this would be the top card of the divine king clubs card and you know notice that his death date had the same card He had the same card. Two pocket kings. Two king of clubs. And if you know the story behind this kid, unbelievable. Didn't live a long life either. Didn't live a long life. When you bring in the element on the periodic table that suits up with the king clubs card, the king clubs card is the 26th card in the deck and that's a direct match of the element iron folks how many letters in our alphabet 26 26 of course is tied to the yod heh vah the ancient israelite god of the bible as is the number 55 55 is also tied to the word satan but i thought this was absolutely fascinating tied to all the letters in the alphabet and this kid is born and he dies on the same numbers. It's telling a story there. It's telling a story. Now we get into Salzburg, his birth city. Born in Austria. Notice I have a picture of Neo from the Matrix. Why do I have that on here? Because see folks, Salzburg, the coordinates of Salzburg. I want you to notice that it's 47 degrees north and 13 degrees east. 47 plus 13 is going to give you the number 60, which is Neodymium. And that's where Keanu Reeves got his name, Neo, or the one, in the movie The Matrix. See, Neodymium is used to make magnets. It's magnetic. Of course, six is the first perfect number, the days of creation, and zero is infinite potential. So you have a perfect number six with infinite potential behind it, and it's a element linking itself to magnetism. Magnetic. Neo, the one. And this guy's 
coordinates of where he was born has the same numbering outcome. Then, of course, you know, the north latitude is the element titanium, which is Saturn's sun. Because Saturn has a moon called Titan. Titanium. Which is where Dragon and Michael fall into these. And, you know, the word tetragrammaton, the box that we live in, which is another name for the yod vah which perhaps may be running this box that we're all in. Which perhaps may be choosing the people that he wants to entertain it. Perhaps the creator of this matrix wants to be entertained, folks. I mean, we like to be entertained, don't you? I like to go to a good concert, live music, movies, stand-up comedy. I like to be entertained. What makes you think that the energies outside of us that created us doesn't want to be entertained? I mean, these prodigies, to me, are completely loud and clear as to what's going on. Because man's being used. Being used. And there's that 47 right there. Tied to the titanium. What about the alchemology of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's birth? This is his birth name now, not his baptized name. His birth name. And, you know, here are the 21 letters matching the 21 elements. Alchemology, if you're new to this, is taking the numerology of each letter and each number, and then we bring it into the element of the periodic table matching up those numbers. And then we add up all these elements' as atomic masses or weights. And I've shown the accuracy of this. So when we go over to the trusty calculator, and I couldn't fit them all on here, so you can fact check it. Total is 176.169. That's a match of the element hafnium, the, 70 sec, the 70 second element. Now you could go into and expand on the names of God in theology, the 72. And then on the flip side, the name of the demons, because there's both angels and demons. But nonetheless, it's linked to that. Where did it get its name from? Let's expand on that. Well, Hafnium is actually short for Hafnia, which is the actual spelling of Copenhagen, Denmark. And I want you to notice the latitude, longitude of that city. 55 and 12. 55 and 12. When you add up 55 and 12... With these coordinates right here, 55.6761, 12.5683, you're going to get the number 68. And that leads us to the erbium element, which has an atomic weight of 166, which we then go right back to, whoops, which we then go right back to here and where he was born and the latitude longitude of Salzburg being tied to titanium, the north latitude. And the Tetragrammaton. See, Tetragrammaton's 166 in the English. And then it's tied to this element right here, Erbium, because Erbium has an atomic weight of 166. Tied to the 72 names in theology. Of course, there's that 55 hanging around again, which I showed in the beginning here. His birth card's the 26 card, and iron is... Got an atomic weight of 55. You see how all these tie in together? Which, again, clearly shows that it's all connected and we're being used. This is too complicated for man to do. Man could never do this and sit down and figure it out. It's not possible. Not possible, folks. So there it is. You know, Tetragrammaton 166. Tied to the 68th element, tied to Copenhagen, tied to Hafnia, which we ended up starting with his alchemology of his birth name. Jack in the box. The tetra, tetra means box, four. I mean, the number 166, if you know anything, see, this is where you get into numerology. This is where most decoders, not you, 
But most of the basic decoders, they fall short because they just connect the numbers and they think they got it figured out. You can't, you gotta know what the numbers mean. What does the 166 mean? I've gotten blocked, folks, because I challenge people to tell me what the numbers mean when they connect them and they can't do it, so I get blocked. Whatever, that's all good. Did me the favor. But that's what I'm up against in this decoding world is that people try to decode and then they don't know what the numbers mean. They, they, they think they got all figured out by connecting Dramatria. Oh, I got it figured out. When they still think man's doing it. They don't still think man's doing everything. So 166, it's a higher form of the 66. It's a 100 with the 66. It's a leader of the 66. That's what the one, one means leadership. It's the leader of the 66. And it's tied to the box. Tied to the ancient Israelite God of the Bible, by the way, which is rather interesting. And this one kind of completely floored me. I didn't catch this until after I did the alchemology. So I'm like, where's the 85? I know what the 85 is, and I was too busy doing the alchemology. But there it is, folks. The number 85 is tied to the 37th element, rubidium, because it has an atomic weight of 85, one of its weights, one of its isotopes. The 37th element, of course, is tied to the Jack Diamonds card, which is the Jack in the Box card. And so here's another format showing Mr. Mozart is the Jack in the Box. I mean, make no mistake about it. Guy's being used. He was being used his whole entire life. Yeah, of course, maybe he was living out his life, you know, having fun and living out a life of pleasure. That's all good. But he was the jack in the box. Man's being used. See, I want to know this stuff. I want to know what's at stake. And you probably do too. That's why you're here listening. It's nice to have a great life, but I want to know why I'm having a great life or why I'm not having such a great life. And here's where we get into the keys of a piano. It has 88 keys. You already knew that. 88's tied to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. The 88 constellations. How about that? 88 keys tied to the 88 constellations. There are no coincidences, folks. There are no coincidences. So the number 88, where is it located in the string of pi? Well, there it is. I've highlighted it in red. The number 88 is located and occupies the 34th and the 35th decimal digits of pi. And... That is the black and white. Because 34 plus 35 is what number? 69. What is 69? The yin yang. What is the yin yang? It's black and white. What are piano keys? Black and white. 88 is tied to 69. How about that? How about that? Isn't that amazing? So this is what sparked it all for me to do this decode. And again, I think it was John Owen, but I'm not sure. But thank you if it was. 52 white keys, 36 black. Total of 88. Look at these numbers. When you take 36 and divide it into 52, look at the outcome you get. The 69, the yin yang which is a match of where it's found in the string of pi. So we're not getting one level, we're getting two, matching the same outcome. The game is fixed, folks. This is a beautifully orchestrated system that we're living in, but it's fixed. It doesn't need my help, your help, it doesn't need any energy exchanges from us. It's doing fine without us. Yet here we are, observing it. I respect it. What, what else can you do? If you take 52 and divide it into 36, if you flip it, you're going to get the number 1.44444. But there's the 144,000 that's talked about in the Torian Bible. Bible meaning two horns related to the color orange and the planet Venus. If you go 144 digits into the string of pi, 
it's going to total up 666. The number of the beasts that we're told we're supposed to stay away from. And yet, isn't that what we are, folks? We are the beast. Man is the virus. Man's the beast, which is carbon. We're made of carbon, which obviously most of you know is six protons, six electrons. You already know the story. And yet it's tied to the 144, tied to the piano keys that we play music on. Man's being used. Let's go a little bit further. I wanted to know what the prime numbers were of 52 and 36, because these are big time numbers. Well, look at what we got. 239 is the 52nd prime number matching the white keys on a piano, and then 151 is the 36th prime number matching the black keys on the piano. And when you go over to the trusty calculator and you add those up, look at the number we get. 39039. And that's a tie to the 39th element yttrium, which, what's its atomic weight? 88 matches the keys on the piano and of course that's tied to the element radium which is Ra which is more than likely linked to the Egyptian sun deity Ra and this is Ray and I've shown this the hero in the last Star Wars movie in 2019 just was spelled R-E-Y to kind of throw you off or maybe to give respect I don't know but I think it's crystal clear crystal clear here what the prime is insane he sinks let's go a little bit further what do the elements of the periodic table have to say well the 52nd element is the king spades card which is the king of the earth which is the dominant keys on the piano and then 36 matching the black keys is krypton superman's home and when you add up 129, just the masculine side now, this is another way to observe it. 129 plus 83, going over to the trusty calculator, you're going to get the number 212. And if we go 212 digits into the string of pi, it totals up 960. Another yin yang. Another black and white. And we're talking about the black and white keys on a piano. Yet we found it from the elements of the periodic table. How's that possible? Well, folks, you already know. I ask a, a rhetorical question because everything's connected. It was already built before we got here. Just playing out our part. So we have this 129 and 83 being 212. And I wanted to give you the visual. I mean, 960. I mean, the yin yang is right there. It's a match, a direct match of the, the black and white piano keys. I mean, I, I didn't even look up who designed the piano. I don't know if you could even find that. Who is it? Maybe, probably can. Probably should have included that in this decode. The inventor of the piano. If you could even find it, find out the birthday of that person. Because man's being used, folks. I mean, there's no way to get these outcomes with all these multiple modalities that are completely separate, discovered at different times, and matching in with real math and the measurement of a circle and matching the colors now, the solid colors on a piano keyboard. So, folks, this is an added in extra that I forgot to put in here. And as I'm going through my presentation, I had said... I should have probably decoded the inventor of the piano and I stopped what I was doing and this is an, an add-in and I'm glad I did. This is the guy that invented the piano. I'm going to try to pronounce his name, Bartolo Lomio Cristofori Di Francesco. What a long name. From Italian descent. And here is his Wikipedia right here. The only thing I can go by, his cards are interesting, his date of birth and all that stuff. But this is the guy that invented the piano. And here is his alchemology, folks. And this is just another nail in the coffin 
on the support of all of us being used, like puppet on strings. Think about it. I'm talking about Mozart and the prodigy and how this guy, the kid's composing at the age of four. One of the most famous pianists of all time. This guy invented the piano. Here is his alchemology. Notice it's a 122. That's tied to the element antimony, which is related to the all-seeing eye of Horus. Now we're getting into ancient Egypt. The 51 is Saturn and Mercury. That's red and blue. But when you add up all his 31 letters, he's got 31. Wow. I wonder what his nickname was. I couldn't fit them all here in the calculator. I did this twice to make sure. You can fact check it. But the total alchemology output is 252.234. I was floored when I got the outcome because I knew what the 252 is linked to. It's linked to the 99th element on the periodic table called Einsteinium. 99 is a master number nine. It's a compound nine. And just why is this so flooring? Because you see folks, the Tetragrammaton, which is, you know, again, tied to the ancient Israelite God of the Bible. The ancient Israelite God of the Bible the Tetragrammaton, which the Greeks coined. Not the Hebrew, but the Greeks did. Tetra means four, the box we live in. It's alchemology. It's 14 letters, which are right here. Going over to the trusty calculator, look at the outcome, folks. It's a freaking 99 on the masculine side. And this is the reason why they named the dog Einstein and Back to the Future. Whether they consciously did it or not, man's being used. So they did it because they're being used. Remember, dog is God spelled backwards. It's kind of a, a joke. And he first sends him to do time travel first. Remember, the flux capacitor is in the shape of a letter Y. Y is yttrium. Yttrium is 88. And 88 is how many keys are on the freaking piano. And here we are talking about the dude who invented the piano having the same freaking alchemology output as the tetragrammaton. The box we live in. This is only 14 letters. This guy right here has got 31. Over double. And it's still a match of the 99. The Einsteinian about that which is why you get you know these who's running washington dc in the white house right there's your answer folks that's what's running it the box the box i think this is my last no, i got two slides left what about the cards 52 white keys 36 black keys there it is the king spades King of the Earth, and the 10 Diamonds card, the 36 card, the white and black keys on a piano. When you say that, King Spades, 10 Diamonds, you're going to get the number 78. And then when you go into the string of pi, look at where the number 78 is found. It occupies the 66th decimal digit of pi, which is one short of 166, which we showed the Tetragrammaton, which is the box we live in. This is tied to so many people. The decode I got coming out on Space Invaders and The Matrix, it's in there. It's into the movie They Live. John Carpenter, the creator of They Live. Roddy Piper, the main star in They Live, is tied to the 7866. Big time stories in our Matrix, folks, and they're all tied together. Not little, little, little piddly things, but big things in our matrix reality that have a lot of say-so. So to conclude this presentation on the piano, notice piano is a five letter word. Five sits in the middle of the dial pad, the busiest number, collects all the energy from all the other numbers around it. 
It's a 22, which matches the word dragon and Michael, the archangel, fighting the dragon. The dragon is the sine wave or the sin wave that we all live in, which is all vibration and frequency, which is what piano is because it creates a vibrational frequency through music. But anyway, notice it's a 22 matching that of titanium, matching that of Mozart's latitude longitude birth city of Salzburg, Austria that I showed. But also the alchemology of piano, the five letter word, five letter element, five elements here, going to the trusty calculator, adding those up, you get the total of 43.023. And when you take 43 and 23 and you add it up, you're gonna get the number 66. Which is right here. Tied to the keys on the piano, tied to the, from the cards that have no association with the piano. Have no association with pi, no association with numerology. But yet here we are, telling the story, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So what is it that you saw during this presentation? And look, folks, I wanna say, I've had some comments from people saying, why are you gonna yell so loud? Listen, I'm sorry if I can't please everybody. This is the way I roll out my expressions. Sometimes I get excited. I raise my voice, I lower it. I'm not here to please everybody. I can't please everybody. So I'm sorry if you don't like the way I present my information. These are my videos. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not gonna change because somebody doesn't like the way I do my presentations. I mean, that's, you know, it's all about live and let live. You do what you gotta do, I gotta do what I gotta do. If you don't like what I gotta do, don't come near me and don't listen to my stuff. I wanted to address that because I've had a few people say that. Why you got to yell? This is the way I roll, man. This is the way I do my presentations. This is what you're going to get. I get excited about this stuff. I get, I'm get i passionate about it. So anyway, what is it that you saw during this presentation? A lot of information. It's such a short period. It's probably one of my shorter videos now. But what is it that you saw during this presentation? I'd like to hear your comments. Well, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality, and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching.